Hello YouTube. On today's post bag video, there are six parcels. One from China and the rest from the UK. I'll start with the Chinese one. It says C0978-01 times one fitness tester. I don't remember ordering a fitness tester and it doesn't look like the right shape for a caliper. This is 98 grams and worth $2. I think I paid more than that. The fitness tester is a cheap multimeter. Another multimeter. I blew the last one up by doing a continuity check on a relay, but one of the 300 volt capacitors was still fully charged. The lead's a bit crap, so what I'm going to do is apply some tape on here to hold these connectors in, and also on here as well, just to add a bit more strength. Because this was sealed up, there won't be any batteries in here. It takes a 9 volt battery. Hopefully the accuracy is decent on this multimeter. It can measure transistors, resistance, voltage in AC and DC, as well as the current. It can do a continuity diode check, or what I call as a BP test. And it can also measure frequencies, which is different. It doesn't measure capacitance or inductance. This is the last cheap meter that I got, and I broke both ends of the test lead. The meter does come with a manual, which I won't be bothered reading. Maybe just to have a look at the specs, to see how good the accuracy is. 2% range on voltage is quite bad, especially with higher voltages. To get to the battery compartment, you need to remove two screws. So we can see the PP3 battery connector here. The pizza for the beat is here. We've got a cob chip there, which does most of the stuff. There is a six pin chip here, which I won't be bothered checking to see what it does. And we've got the internal wire to measure the current. It does seem to measure the voltage of the batteries okay. That's quite decent for a one half volt battery. I've now added the duct tape on the weak parts of the cable. So hopefully I won't break the cables now. It's usually where you bend the cables. Next is a parcel that was sent as second class large letter. This was 240 grams and they paid £1.22 on postage. What I should have done is done two orders so it would cost the seller more. This has come from a company called Power Comfy. I've already opened this up to check the quality so that's why there's an empty bag here. This cable was sold as a 1.8 meter 13 amp cable so I'll just check the length. It's actually two and a half meters. It's actually two and a half meters so if we look inside here it has a 13 amp fuse but that doesn't look like the right type of fuse. So that says Atlas fuse on there, but the letters don't really line up properly. This isn't a Busman fuse, which is the normal type of fuse. So this is a, some cheap Chinese brand fuse. It might be hard to see. On the top left, it says 13A for 13 amps. So the fuse and the plug is rated at 13 amps. It's molded. It has a weird shape on the earth side. It's got nice grips on the plug. The earth and neutral pins are half covered, which is correct. The IEC side, the C13, is always rated at 10 amps. And indeed, it does say 10 amps on there. The cable is only strong as its weakest link. So this can't really be sold as a 13 amp plug. It would be hard to show the text on the cable. It says it's a one millimeter square cable. And for 13 amps, I'm sure it's supposed to be 1.5 millimeters. So if you're using this type of cable for 10 amps, it's fine. But if it's rated at 13 amps, maybe for a short time, but not 24 seven. Definitely not for mining 13 amps 24 seven. Next is a box that was sent by a Royal Mail 48. And this came from a seller called 24 seven supply. It comes with some instructions. I will be looking at this later on because this will be dangerous live voltages. This is a consumer unit or normally called as a garage consumer unit. The lid comes off with a lot of force on the right hand side and it doesn't fully open. It would be nice if it was a flip up lid, but it's not. It's uh, flipped to the side and don't fully open. So on the right hand side, we have a 63 amp RCD, which is rated at 30 milliamps. It has a test button. This is a five slot consumer unit. The first two are taken up by the 63 amp RCD. Next is a 32 amp breaker, 16 amp breaker, a six amp breaker. For my purpose, I won't be using the six amp. I'm only using the 16 and 32 amp. On the back, there are four holes for drilling into a wall. On the top, there are three cutouts. I think this will be the fourth cutout here, and the same on the bottom as well. Depending on the cable length, I'll probably use the cutout at the bottom to keep it waterproof. There shouldn't really be any water in the garage, but just in case. So the line and neutral comes in at the top, one being the phase and N being neutral. The neutral goes through this existing cable to this bus bar on the left. The bus bar on the right is for earth. Number two is the line out. These are already connected to the breakers using this bus 
crossbar at the bottom which you can just see there the output of the breakers are here at the top and then those will go to the circuits and as I said I won't be using the 6 amp 6 amp is usually for used for lighting 32 amp is usually used for ring mains and then you've got the 16 amp for dedicated circuits like a dryer or something I'm not sure why this is loose that shouldn't be right but it will clip in like that. I am a little bit confused. I think I went on the cheap and went for the one without the RCD, but it looks like I got the one with the RCD. Having the RCD is better, but I wanted to do this on the cheap, so I'm not sure what I've done. I'll have to check my order history to see what happens. Maybe they run out of the non-compliant, non-RCD version, so they've had to send me the RCD version. I think the 17th edition of the electronics code, or whatever it's called, says I need to have a metal consumer unit. So this consumer unit made out of plastic wouldn't be too cold. In the past it was fine but now you have to have metal ones next is a power saw sent by a royal mail 48 hours from kang tools it says it's track delivery but that's not a normal royal mail tracked barcode it is a kang's 16 piece hole saw kit there's a lot of these on the market this is just imported and rebranded it's not their own brand i think this terminology is called white labeling this piece at the top is called the arbor and that's what goes through the center but i'm not sure which way around it goes it's slightly greasy there's an allen key there's another piece there Okay, so that unscrews that way. It looks like you've got two pieces, or two tops of the arbor, depending on the size of the drill that you're using. So there must be a spinner one, or this might be hand tool based, maybe, I don't know. But I won't be using this or the Allen key. The Allen key is for this grub screw here. Just make sure that's tight at the moment. Yep, that's tight. And there's also a plate here. So I'm assuming I use this plate. Probably for extra stability to stop this rounded flat shape part, which is the center part, from chewing the edges by having these two extra pins for us as extra support. So I'd assume that would go in like that, with the arbor going straight through, and then you tighten it up at the top. That's quite loose at the moment, but I'll read the instructions to find out how to tighten it up. So this is the 127mm, and this is the only one that I'm going to use. I've got all these other hole cutters, which I don't really have any need to use them. So this is to cut hole in wood to allow 6-inch ducting to go through. The 6-inch ducting is about 152mm, but I want to cut the hole a bit smaller, and that kind of fit is called an interference fit. It'll stop the ducting from easily coming out, but it won't obstruct the ducting too much. It'll just push it in a little bit. There doesn't seem to be any instructions. So we've got 19. 22, 29, 32, 38, 44, 51, 64, 76, 89, 102, 127, hole saws, a drive plate, large mandrel with drill set and a small mandrel. And finally a hex wrench or allen key in the UK. They must use the word hex wrench in America. It's hard and carbon steel. Some other sellers sell this as lifetime warranty. It probably will be lifetime for me as I'm not going to be a heavy user of the tool. And I think the reason why it's not tight because I had the nut in upside down. So the arbor is designed to make the hole first. Once it's bitten into the hole, then the rest of these teeth here, some stick out, some don't. So I think it's either designed like that or it's badly made. Let me check another one. Yeah, it's designed like that. You have one out, one in to bite into the wood better. And this can only go clockwise. Or you meant to go anti-clockwise. I think you meant to go clockwise because then it can bite into the wood better. Going the other way wouldn't really do much except drill faster. Next is a parcel sent by a Royal Mail 48 hours. And this has come from Dapet Limited. This is a silvered line, long masonry drill bit. It's 20 mil wide and 400 mil deep. Hopefully the top end is 13 mil so it'll fit in my drill. And we can see it's a mainstream bit because it's got these bits that stick out. Quite greasy. And it's nice that it comes in its own case because that wouldn't fit in my drill bit box anyway. The other ones that I have are probably 300 mil deep which is fine for an older house but for new houses which have an air gap in the middle you'll need a longer drill bit. I already have a hole already drilled but I need to widen the hole and this should be right. Quite heavy as well. This isn't for a SRS drill just a standard 13mm chuck drill. It does have a section at the top which you can nail or screw into a wall so you can have it hanging up if you wanted to. I actually like it because it's got its own case with it. You don't normally see that. Or, well I don't. And finally a box that's marked fragile. The box contains two 6 inch ducts. These are 10 meters long each. I'll check them just in case if they're not. These are slightly different because it's come from a different manufacturer. It's matte on the inside and shiny on the outside. I can already see that there's some holes which might not show up on camera. You can slightly see it but it's hard to see because there's so much light in this room. Ah, that's better. So you can see the light bits getting darker as I move my hand around on the outside. They're not actually holes. The holes in the aluminium but not holes in the plastic layer. I'm just going to measure this to make sure it's 10 meters and it should be alright after that. I've just stretched one of them and it came to 9.9 .9 meters instead of 10. I'm sure if I stretched it more it 
my head up to 10 meters. It would be nice if they gave me a bit more extra. The cheap multimeter is the DT832, currently on sale for £2.84. I got it for £2.66 with free postage and packaging, and because I used the gift cards, I got it for free. This came from a Chinese seller, and we can see the specifications here. This multimeter is a decent cheap multimeter. Next was the 13 amp plugs, advertised as 1.8 meters. I think these were 2.5 meters. Price is 2 99 each from a seller called Power Comfy, and if we zoom in, we can see on the IEC side it says 10 amps. This shouldn't really be sold as 13 amps if the cable and the IEC side is rated at 10 amps. I got two of these and it was 5 98 and after the free Amazon gift cards, the cables were free. The freeway garage consumer unit came from the seller 24 7 Supply Limited and indeed I did get the RCD version. It's IP40 rated. IP is ingress protection. First number four means protection against solid objects greater than one millimeter such as a wire. It's not dust protection. The last digit was a zero which means it's not moisture protection so you don't want to get this wet. It comes with the 63 amp at 30 milliamp RCD and the breakers are 6 amp, 16 amp and 32 amps. The dimensions are also here and I think this is the other one that I was looking at which I didn't buy. This was the cheaper one with a standard 63 amp switch. It actually says 100 amp switch but it's advertised as 63 amp. Including postage this was £25.98 and I used my Amazon vouchers to get it for free. Next is a 16 piece whole saw cutting set with cutters ranging from 19 to 127 millimeters. This came from a seller called You'll Be Limited. I've already mentioned what comes inside the kit. This was $6.99 and I used my Amazon vouchers to get it for free. Next was the long Main Street drill bit, 20 mil by 400 mil. They're advertising it as their own brand but it was actually Silver Line Tech. This was £4.50. The tip is made out of copper braced tungsten carbide and is suitable for concrete masonry and stone. I made a few drill bits blunt whilst trying to drill through stone. I also used my Amazon and vouchers to get this for free and finally the six inch ducting made out of aluminium 10 meters long it's advertised for 14 pound and 95 pence it says in the event of a fire there won't be any toxic gases and there's some other marketing stuff here i got two for 29 pounds 90 and i used my amazon vouchers to get it for free this came from a seller called home with bargains limited if you've liked this video and found anything useful leave a thumbs up if you haven't done already please subscribe and click on the bell for more notifications and could you also like my facebook page and I'll see you next time.